What's up guys, this is going to be a replay review of American Jester. He requests this, and I think this is currently Plat 1 ELO, and it'll be a Driver and Jungle game, seemingly. So, yep, and hide. And so right off in the, uh, at the start of the game, you, you want to evaluate what type of lane structures you're going to have, right? And so when you look at it, you know that on average, Singe is going to try and walk through the lane and then shove the first wave or maybe do some type of a proxy. And Rumble's response, uh, you might be able to stand over here like, and be able to get the CS over here. But in general, uh, Singe is going to try and do something along the lines. Or Singe can try and freeze back the wave, which is really, really interesting. Because um, if Singe decides to just play the lane passively and just uh, you know play it on his side of the map, then you end up in a situation where you see that you know, Rumble's going to passively shove by using Q over the minion wave, using E over time. And that's going to be how, uh, you know, Rumble gets a potential shove. Now, if Singe runs through the lane while Rumble's queuing, uh, Singe is going to take some damage. But that really depends on what Singe wants to do. Singe can also attempt to bypass by going for a proxy. So we really don't know the status of top. But we know that if Singe runs through the lane and chooses to tank the uh, Rumble Q damage, he can definitely shove in. So by choice, on average, Singe is going to shove in. Uh, we know that in the jungle matchup, Vi versus Jarvan is a pretty washed matchup because Vi is typically going to skill W first on average, and Jarvan's going to have a damage ability as well, E or Q, typically E. And both passives are relatively uh, valuable in terms of 1v1 scrap. So you might argue that Vi has a slightly higher damage uh, combo because you're going to get two rotations of E most of the time, while Jarvan doesn't necessarily do that. But overall, I'd say it's a pretty even matchup with uh, the pressure going into Jarvan because Vi has two E stacks. Um, in the mid lane, it's TP GP versus Galio, and I think this is a matchup that's pretty self explanatory. Um, Galio often has the initiative in being able to cue the wave. Uh, two to three times while having the AoE passive. Um, what GP really would like to do is uh, probably have a situation where he can Q, you know, Galio multiple times to be able to take uh, the HP level down and then force the Galio TP first. This will give uh, GP a better TP timing on average. You know, maybe going for the Sheen, maybe going for something else. But GP doesn't really have a way to shove the wave by choice, except autoing and then trying to get a barrel off. But if Galio's fronting himself in the wave, then it's probably going to be a situation where Galio gets a shove because of the AoE passive. Um, the real problem with this is when Galio takes too much poke damage. So Galio should be running some variation of armor to allow for sustain against the GP poking uh, the Galio and not getting poked out of lane. So I'm going to give the shove this way. And then the last uh, situation is going to be Cog Janna versus Zaya Nami. Um, Cog doesn't really have AoE abilities. It goes WQE or WEQ usually on Cogma. And that's going to have one AoE potentially, but Zaya has so many uh, ways to shove the lane with Q, uh, with E drawback. And then you look at Janna versus Nami, although Janna will give you the additional 80 to shove the wave, uh, Janna autos in and of themselves aren't that strong, and uh, Nami can typically put herself in an aggressive position to get multiple autos, and uh, typically Janna's will not run 80, while Nami's will sometimes run 80 reds to shove the wave. So based on the Zaya aspect and the Nami, it's probably going to be a shove. So RA, we know that the lane structure is probably going to go like this. Uh, Vi has the edge in the jungle, you have the Galio edge, and then you have the bot shove edge, right? So where can we look to take fights in general, right? Well, let's say we invade the top jungle. No, that's bad because we have two losing fights, the top losing fight, which means Singed probably rotates first, and the fight that you're losing 1v1 in the jungle, right? And so far as you're already probably going to lose the 1v1 in the jungle if you guys just straight fight, then you're putting yourself in a situation that's pretty bad, right? Uh, because you don't want a 1v1 when you're in a losing 1v1, right? So in, going for top means that Singe comes down, um, and your Galio probably comes up, which is just a wash, right? If their top laner comes down and your mid laner comes up, then it's just a wash. It's Then it's just a 2v2, and it's you versus Vi, and you're going to lose in the top side. So you don't really want to invade the top side on average unless you see something happening. Alternatively, 
you know that ga your Galio can come first, and you know that uh, your bot lane can come first, right? So you know that you're probably going to have uh, one person advantage here, and then two people here. So even though Vi is going to be able to, I would say, aggress onto you in the bottom side on average, because she beats you in a 1v1, you actually win the bottom side, right? Because let's say Galio rotates first, and then your bot lane rotates first, and then you go, right? That's four people. Now let's say, well, their GP is not going to be there first, and their AD and their Gen is going to be there first, right? So insofar as the Vi is the only one there, that's going to be one person on average, right? So you have a pretty strong invade onto the bottom side, assuming your team is uh, coordinating with you and you coordinate with your team. So uh, what is the result of that is you probably want to lean towards playing on the bottom side of the map on average, right? You want your invades to be bot-centric, and you want to uh, retract to your... Like, this is the safest part of your jungle, while this is the less safe part of your jungle, right? Um, but we have to keep in mind that these are just based on shoves, right? These are just based on how lanes shove. So you can probably start the top side of the map without um, much difficulty. Uh, Vi typically isn't going to have her E skilled. It's going to have her W skilled first, so you're actually in a 1v1 match. And you probably want to do something like uh, starting somewhere on the top side, and then you could potentially aggress into the bomb side and then retracting over here. So if we look at overall scalability, we have to see what's going on. Um, you guys have one global, two global, three global, and they have one, two, and then a semi-global with the GP ult. So what this means is that uh, you win in late game slow pushes. Um, this is because if, let's say, you're at a Baron fight and then Galio ults in, and the GP was matching, so the GP ult uh, TP's in, then now you're up a TP, and then now you can split the map. Um, do you win in team fights? Well, it's uh, arguable. I'm of the opinion that uh, Zaya is a crit champion, while Kog is not a crit champion, which means that you have a higher percentage chance of winning uh, team fights on average. But Kogma does get the first auto off because of W range. So if you guys are equal range, then I would say Zaya wins. But if you guys let Kogma get the first hit, then you're probably losing that fight on average. But overall, I would give it to you guys. Um, GP is a factor. Sort of like an assassin factor. Vi is sort of like an assassin factor. Singe operates as a tank. Jen operates as really good ult. So I'm going to go with uh, their win conditions are Jen ult, uh, Cog auto attacking first, GPR or E barrel, uh, Vi R as a pick, and then Singe kind of just does Singe things. Um, and in the top lane, I'm going to say you can win by ult, you can win by your ult engage, you can win by your ult, and then uh, out-globaling them with TP. You can win on Zaya, uh, just auto attacks. And then uh, Nami, you can probably win on Q. And then R sometimes, right? So both teams have decent ways of winning. But I'm going to give the edge to you guys because if you're in... If your Zaya is in range of auto attack, then you should be able to out TPS the Kogma, and then you have better global advantage. Um, so I'm going to give it to you guys. So that was just the setup of the game, and I want to see how you proceed. I would open with a red side start for me. So let's see. If you want to be aggressive, you guys could also opt for a invid. Um, I say this because Rumble and Singe are relatively equal in how short their cooldowns are. You and Vi are relatively equal. Uh, Galio and GP are relatively equal. Zaya Cog and then Janna Nami. All pretty decent. And you can flip for uh, jungle control if you really wanted to. I wonder if I can lock some. Nope. It's fine. You could flip for jungle control. It's really a wash in how it could go. Um, the reason why you might want to flip for jungle control is let's say you invade the Let's say you invade the bottom side jungle, right? Uh, we already established that you have a strong invade onto the bot side of the jungle. So what happens if you go in and invade or invade, and then you drop like, you know, you drop a couple wards, right? Again, you, your bottom is the stronger side and the Vi has a stronger top side. So by dropping wards, one, you deny Vi some incentive to start on the bottom side of the map. And uh, two, this gives you information on vice pathing, obviously, right? Um, also, you kind of flip the game, right? You can 50-50 it. You don't know who's going to win this fight most of the time. It could be you because 
Uh, there are so many flips such as Nami. And, uh, you know, E flash from Singed, all these things. But you could go for a flip. So if you drop like Ward here, here, and you force Vi into the top side, or you force a flash or something, obviously there's value. And then you can just do a rat like red into invading this side of the jungle because you have priority here and then you can retract and then you can get a three quadrant denial or something right you could retract onto the wolf uh onto the raptor of the krug camp and it's just it's just really nice in solo queue if you can coordinate and invade onto the side of the map and force the enemy team to start the other side because if you force Vi to start here and then you go for this invade into the bomb side which you have priority in you almost three quadrant them a uh, high percentage of the time which is going to have a lot of initiative in the game because you're going to be able to route out the Vi and force uh, her hand in certain situations. So I really dislike this blue start. Um, my first, like my first preferential move is to go for a bot side jungle invade. Um, but if you're not coordinated to do that, if your team isn't coordinated to do that, then my second preference would be starting in the top side. So there are multiple reasons why you want to start the top side. Um, similar to how you would like to invade the bottom side, uh, Vi wants would like to invade the top side for the reasons mentioned before, right? So now whenever you go to your top side, you're going to be scared when you're going to go to your top side because you're going to be losing 2v2s on average. And that the way of mitigating that damage is by starting on that side of the map, right? If you take the red and the raptors and then you know escape from this side, then you're going to get value out of this before she takes control of it, right? Because the... Value comes after the lanes start to shove. The reason why Vi has priority here is because her lanes shove uh, and she beats you in a 1v1 on average, right? So so you're going to want to start here on average because you don't want Vi to get value out of your topside jungle on average when she does decide to invade. And typically, you so you would want to go here and then you would either want to invade or uh, go for these camps and that'd be a safer play. Or you could go for some type of invade given that your lanes are ready to move with you. But a secondary problem is that, let's say you decide to go for blue and to invade here, right? The fact that you got a leash is already bad because that means your lane isn't going to get the shot that they want, right? Now, if um, if Vi decided to start here and their bot lane didn't leash, or like let's say their bot lane didn't leash at all, right? Like let's say they're here and they get a shove on, right? Your team can't do anything against that because they helped you leash. Now the shove is actually going going in on them in the first one or two waves until the wave crashes and then they can shove back based on champions. But then you're losing an invade advantage by forcing your bot lane to leash. So uh, this this is just a my macro mistake in the early game and I think that you can improve on this by understanding the theory behind uh, lane shoves and uh, matchups. So now that you've chosen the, I would say the third best start seemed inefficient right oh your champion disappeared jesus that was messy okay now why why won't you just wait for flag you're gonna take extra damage like, it was one second on flag, you could have auto EQ'd. Uh, you would have just taken less damage by canceling one of the auto attack animations. You know their bot lane wasn't lane, but they didn't opt for a shove. So, yep. Uh, this is a good ping. You know that Vi's headed towards that direction. The two camps, and then the red. Sure. Rat seems fine to me. And in the top lane, it seems like Singe is opting to play it more passive. Not going for some type of proxy or shove. And mid is equal right now. GP is here. So you saw GP just ward the left side, seemingly, because he came from over here. So you know that some type of ward structure is probably around here. So um, at this point, you have a couple of options, right? Top gank seems reasonable. Uh, you could come over here and try something like this but it would probably just be a flash for flash trade because assuming GP skill W second, any type of uh, flash W attempt from Galio is just going to be flashed and they can flash down. Maybe you could get something like, let's say he goes for a flash W and then GP Ws and then uh, 
he sees you coming from over here, and then you flash EQ, and then he just EQs here, right? So, and then he flashes down here, right? So what you have to do is, like, you have to flash EQ over here, but that means he has to make, make a mistake by flashing into you. He could just as easily walk in and wait for your EQ. So uh, mid is probably a very, very low percentage. You already know Vi started on top side on, because um, bot showed up first, and top uh, did leash, which is why he showed up to lane light. You already knew this. And so your movement here, when you can't gank mid here, is you have a couple of movements, right? So option number one is the very obvious movement, is to go for some type of a top gank. Perfectly reasonable. You can burn a flash. You can probably burn the mid's flash as well. But uh, top seems to be in a higher position to be able to get killed based on the HP value and the status of the lane being out a little more than the mid lane. Um, option number two is probably going to be to go for some type of a counter gank, right? Like, let's say if I did this, 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 or, you know, this, 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 and is on the bottom side of the map right now. You know, he's probably around here somewhere. She's probably around here somewhere or around here. Well, you know that by looking at the bottom side of the map, uh, Vi's gank path is relatively minimal, because at best, Vi can be over here. Maybe Vi could be over here, right? And do some type of a flash queue. But if Vi flashes over here and then queues, your, uh, your teammate over here should have enough reaction time to flash away from uh, the Vi Q because Jerry right, uses flash over here, and if I's over here and Q flashes, then there's enough reaction time. the the way, the lane isn't out enough for red buff proccing to be as efficient on Vi, so Vi doesn't really want to have a bot lane gank unless she thinks she's going to counter gank you. But she knows that you started on the bottom side and you didn't do a level two gank mid or bot, so she knows you're probably on the top side and you know she's probably on the bottom side somewhere. Um, so the obvious conflict lane is the mid lane, right? Because if you go for this type of play, if you go for this mid lane gank and you end up over here inside the turret tanking some damage, then Vi has a very easy, you know, Q flash or some some combo of moves to be able to kill you on the spot over here, right? Additionally, you have to think about so that that's if you gank the GP. If you gank the GP, uh, there's turn potential because um, your two v two is probably worse because you lose to her and mid lane is relatively equal, but Galio shoves, but that doesn't necessarily mean you win the two v two. But if you uh, counter gank her, um, obviously, like if she uses her Q poorly or if, if she uses her Q on Galio and your Galio survives, then you know you can turn potentially. But that's only if she comes from this type of an angle, comes over here, and uh, she has to think that uh, the two of them can kill Galio from 100 to zero, right? So let's say GP chunks him a little bit with Q, uh, maybe even gets a barrel over here, and then gets you know an E off, right? Then his HP is like somewhere over here, maybe even over here, right? That means Vi has to do half the HP value of, her, of Galio herself. So she has to land Q, auto E, auto E, and then flash to follow. It's it's a very hard kill to get based on the Galio's uh, positioning towards the top side of the map where he's defensive towards you, as well as uh, the HP value that he's played the lane out with. So based on that fact, it's very low. It's a very low percentage chance that Vi is going to go for a mid gank. Um, one, because the kill potential is low. Two, because it's potentially dangerous for her because you're nearby. And uh, you probably also don't want to go for some type of a mid gank here because of uh, the aforementioned reasons of being inside the tower. Flash flash inside the tower. Vi Q flashes from over here. Something like that, right? So your movement should either be to go for the top gank, as we've talked about, or, uh, you know, we talked about not invading the top side, right? So you don't want to do that. At best, you want to do the scuttle, but you don't really want to move into here. Um, the only reason you have for moving in here is if your lanes both collapse, right? So based on how Cinch has played out the lane, uh, he's letting the lane shove into him, right? Uh, one, because he leashed, and two, because he's opting not to proxy a wave or queue through the minions and then TP back for some reason, right? So that means top shoving in and mid shoving in, right? So insofar as those are true, even though Vi beats you in a 1v1, it's not really a 1v1 because you have two laners that collapse first, so it's actually a 3v1, right? If you invade so you can actually go for information and intel on her side of the camps i'm not opposed to this but like this should be a response in the game right you didn't know when you started blue how top lane was going to end up you didn't know if singe was going to proxy or run through the wave you didn't know if rumble was going to shove but now that you know this is the play that you sh you could potentially make but you didn't know this at first so be cognizant of when you're choosing to do this invade and don't do this invade when singe is shoving into you Right. So you have a couple of plays after you clear your red. You have red into top gank. You have red into jungle intel. Keep in mind that these camps could be gone, right? She could have done uh, blue gromp wolves red. Potentially, it's not a great route. She would probably want to get red. But 
she could potentially have done this. So there could be min value and you would only be dropping wards or getting intel. Or you could take red and then go for some type of a play like uh, going for raptors to uh, have proximity to counter in case Vi goes for some type of a play here. Or go for uh, go for Krugs into waiting for, I don't know, maybe waiting for Rumble level 3 to gank, although the wave is shoving. So Krugs is probably a bad play. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rate a couple of plays here. There's one play in top gank, one play in jungle invade, and one play in raptors. Um, in terms of priority, which one of these are, are the best plays? Uh, raptors is probably the worst of the plays because as we established, Galio doesn't die a high percentage of time. So I'm going to say that's the third best option, right? Your first best option is probably going to be to uh, get the Singe Flash, potentially, right? So let's look at the top interaction, right? You come to this bush, you walk up a little bit, uh, you EQ, uh, he flashes away, right? So you're here. You can probably get, uh, you know, if you walk out a little bit, you can probably get over here, right? So it's not a clear, it's not a clear position. It's not a clear EQ on top of it. Uh, in fact, it's probably going to be an EQ flash trade, right? So if you if you walk out bush here, you can EQ over here, and then you can flash to up to I don't know somewhere up here, right? Probably somewhere up to here. Then Singe's move is pretty clear, and it's the flash probably over here outside the range with his flash, right? And then maybe you can get a red buff auto, uh, take him down over here. This is about as much damage as you're going to do. So Rumble's job is to be able to do three bars of damage, right? So that means Rumble has to move up here, obviously. And then when Cinch flashes over here, uh, Rumble's going to flash after him. And then try and auto Q, auto E, E, and be able to do this amount of damage, right? Rumble's Q will probably do this much. A couple of autos, maybe two autos will do up to this much, and maybe a couple of these will do this much. Uh, it's close. Pro you probably won't get the kill from damage foresight on my end, right? So by doing a top gank, it's probably going to be bad because you're going to be trading Rumble Flash and your Flash for a potential kill that you're probably not going to get if Singe plays it properly. Now, if Singe's HP was somewhere like here or here, just a little bit more harassed from Rumble, then you can probably get the kill. But at this point in the game, you don't want to trade two flashes for one, right? You don't want to trade top flash and jungle flash for top flash. That doesn't make any sense. Um, all it really allows you to do is allows your Rumble to shove in the wave, which he's going to do anyway. He's going to do anyway. It. Which he's going to do anyway because we know Vi's probably on the bottom side of the map, so the shove is pretty free. Rumble has this free shove in the first place. He doesn't need your help. He doesn't need you soaking his EXP or his gold when you uh, get some of the CS by accident, potentially. And you don't want to trade two flashes one, right? So I'm going to go with... Um, that's the second best play, right? Raptors are the third best play. Top gank trade is the second best play. Unless Rumble gets the health bar to somewhere around here. And then... So this is going to be your first best play. So moving into the jungle to get vision is your first best play. Why? Because you'll know if she did these two camps, which means that you should be able to map out her CS numbers. Um, keep in mind that blue is one CS. If you see uh, Gromp done, that's two CS. And if you see uh, Wolves up, then she didn't do Wolves. So, and if she does red, because she's probably going to skip Raptors, gets to be three CS. So when she shows up in the bomb side, you expect to see three CS. So that means if you press tab and see four CS, that means she did scuttle or stole your Gromp. If you walk over here and Gromp is up, but Wolves are down, that's four CS, five CS here. So if she shows up here with five CS, that means she didn't do this or didn't do this. If she shows up with six CS, she probably did one of these two. If she shows up with seven CS, she probably definitely did both of these, right? A Gromp steal and a Scuttle Steel, right? If both are down, that's 5 CS. Uh, this is going to be 6, and if she shows up with 6, um, you don't, like, you know that both Scuttle and Krug, and your Gromp is up 7, you know that one of them is down, and 8, you know both are down, right? This is a lot of intel. Additionally, you have supplementary information you can get, because when you assume that Vi is in the bomb side of the map, and you have this ward available for you, uh, you can drop it, you know, in a advantageous position, uh, either here, or here, or even potentially here for potential lane ganks. Those are the three best spots that you can drop it in general. Uh, one, two, three. 
and this will give you further intel into what Vi's pathing is. Additionally, based on how the wave is set up, you know that Rumble is going to eventually shove this into turret, and if she, it, he, does a quick shove, then you can probably do a dive because you know Vi's probably on the bomb side, and she's probably going to do some type of play, right? So, um, you know, Vi's countered bot side players to steal your Gromp, go for this mid gank that we think is bad, or go for the bot gank that we think is bad, right? So we kind of force Vi into bad situations uh, when we do do this invade. So I really, really, really would like to see this invade come out from you. And it's a solid, solid invade, right? So we're going in. Oh, Gromp is down. Okay, that's fine. Wolves are up. Let's take the wolves. This ward is bad. The ward goes here, here, or here. Now, which of those three words would I prefer right now? Well, Vi's path was probably blue, gromp, red, and then looking for something here, right? So, um, the most likely path that could impact within the next minute, which is how long the word lasts, roughly, is going to be, uh, let's say she does red, and then she cycles back here, right? The second path, so she has a couple of paths, right? She can do this, 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 this you know, base, and then come up for wolves, and then queue over the wall here, or she can come up and, you know, show in this ward. Um, one of those two. Or from here, she could have gone raptors and come back, right? So when you look at that, there's justification for all three. But we have to look at the success of each situation, right? By the time she's does red, Krugs, Raptors and comes back here. This ward is probably not going to be that useful because it's gonna, you know, this takes like 20 seconds. This takes like at least you know 15 seconds, and this will die by the time uh, she does this type of a wrapping structure. So this ward is not great, right? Um, if she bases here and walks up, uh, then you know your your ward might get the end of it. But you don't have to drop it right now, right? You can drop it later. You can drop it when you're done with the wolves coming up to do some type of a dive that I expect that you should be doing, right? And let's say you do these wolves and then you come over here and then drop the ward here as you're going to top dive. That ward won't really matter too much because you have to look at how the lane is going to be structured uh, for lane ganks, right? The only reason she would walk up here is one, to do the ground propellative or two, to do a top regank, right? But let's look at that. So we do wolves, come up, dive 2v1, successful 2v1 dive, assuming, right? Um, shove the wave into turret, cinch TPs, wave is under turret, waves that, uh, our wave is dying to a turret, cinch TPs, cinch gets all the CS, their mini wave stacks up on top of each other, right? 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and now their wave is bigger than our wave and it's shoving back, right? It's shoving into our side. So... When the wave is shoving back into our side, Rumble is going to play passive, right? Because the wave is going to shove in, and it's going to freeze out, then it's going to come back to us. So if Vi wants to go for some type of lane gank here, 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 it's not going to be effective, because Rumble is just going to play back and get the CS, and play slow. She's not going to play up, she's not going to move up to this brush, she's not going to move up to this brush, and she doesn't need to move up to this brush, she can play on the bottom side. And the wave is shoving back, so that gives Rumble incentive to play safely. So the lane gank ward doesn't actually impact because the percentage of a lane gank is going to be extremely, extremely small. So the best route, I would say, is to do the wolves, walk up, drop this ward as you're walking up, because maybe you see, like, let's say you drop it here. You might see her queuing over from here, and you might see her going from here to her gromp, right? But you want to do these wolves first. And why are you queuing? EQ to get the knockup. You don't need to kill the small ones because your Q is going to kill it. You're wasting time. Always be cognizant of your lanes while you're doing this. Look at Galio. Can he die? Eh, it's close. It's potential. Recommend your Galio to hug the top side of the map, maybe. Right? Recommend, like, do a back ping here. Do a back ping here. So, saying, hey, if I could be on Scuttle, if I could be stealing my Gromp, we don't know. If I could be over here, ping back here, ping back here. Inform your laners of Vi's movements based on your read on the map. This word is garbage. Don't do this word. And now, right? Now you're setting up for the top dive, right? Now, you're supposed to drop the word here, but you dropped it here, which is poor, but, you know, it's okay. No! 
Do not reveal your position in the top dive. What will Singe do once you reveal your position? He's going to walk back and he's not going to let you dive him. Now, granted, if Singe is playing an optimal strategy, he's not going to let you dive him in the first place, right? So let's look at how much damage we can do in this dive. As we establish, if now the dive is different, right? Because now you're right under him. So what happens in the dive is you walk right next to him, right? And then you get your passive auto. Boom. And uh, Rumble starts getting uh, chip damage, right? Because you're tanking first because you have W, obviously. So you auto W, right? And then Rumble starts getting damage. So the Q's going to do this much. Or the Q's going to do like this much. And then with like one E, it's going to do this much. And then he has like two bars of HP left. Maybe a little more. So then it's uh, it's an outplay, right? Uh, let's say you EQ, right? Obviously, his initial reaction is going to be to flash the EQ. So, you EQ and it misses. Sure, that's fine. You can still tank the majority of the tower hits. Because, look at your HP, you can tank 1, 2 for sure, right? So, you auto W, you're going you're to tank 1, then you're going to EQ. You're going to tank a second one, you're going to flash out, right? And then... Uh, or flash to follow and then get another auto attack on him, right? So his HP is definitely going to be around two. And then Rumble has clear, a clear auto attack, um, maybe another E, and then he can get the kill and then probably flash out, right? Rumble could have done a better job setting this up by getting a bit of harassment, but um, in general, you should be able to get this kill. And even if you, uh, even if you trade one turn, right? Let, like let's say you trade your life to get this kill, they're gonna you're gonna be denying CS and gold. When he TPs back, he's going to miss something. It's definitely worth it to die here because you get the assist gold as well as first blood as well as CS EXP denial and your rumble gets a hand lane. And you're not really... Like, what are you going to do after this anyway, right? Are you going to go back to Krubs after tanking two turret shots? Not really. Can you do Raptors after tanking two turret shots? Not really. Does the scuttle actually have value to you? No, because if I wants to gank top, he'll go from this, she'll go from this way and avoid this. And if he wants to gank mid, he'll go from this way and avoid it, right? The scuttle actually has min value for you outside of some gold and EXP, but that's not really what you care about at the moment, right? But by hitting this... By hitting the scrying, it's really, really poor. It's really, really bad because you reveal it. This is a clear, this is a clear dive. Rumble could have set up better. Clear, clear dive. <laughs> extremely, extremely clear dive now. Extremely, extremely clear dive. And so, okay, so now we just have to say that uh, your routing has already been. Uh, slightly unoptimal, your your early game macro is a little suboptimal. Now we have to think about what's going on in the game, right? So we still know Vi somewhere around here. Um, can you go for the mid 2v2? Potentially, if she go if she decides to go for the engage, right? Like, what engage can you do? You can walk up. You can probably walk from here, or you can EQ from here to here and probably flash up to here. So you're never getting in range of here. Your position here is only for counter ganks ever. And that means, like, Vi could potentially go for this, right? You know, your bot lane's not really in danger to get dove at this type of an HP level. Pretty reasonable. Um, it's either this. So if you're not going to go for the top dive, I think the next best possible play is going to be go for Raptors, right? As we established, by doing Raptors, you keep proximity to mid in case something happens mid. And it's uh, one of your camps on the map since you took these, or these camps are down. And then you could uh, take it from there. Raptors is probably the superior play. Although if you want a hard counter, I call this a hard counter because you're sitting in the lane. And I call this a soft counter because you're in close proximity. So I'm okay with either of these. But this nets, this necessitates a read on the Vi. Not necessarily necessitates, but uh, it means that you have to have a good idea that why Vi would do this. And while Vi does have some percentage chance of being able to kill Galio here, as we said, uh, Galio's HP is relatively high. It's a low percentage play by Vi. And so you see that he awarded this. Like, it's clear that he awarded this. It's super clear that he awarded this. So now you're going to do this. So now you've been revealed, right? Not only did you reveal your position here, you know, by taking the scrying, which is pretty obvious since you, you know, you're, you're definitely on the side of the map. But now he knows, now Vi knows how much CS you have. You have 9 CS. So when he walked into your jungle, he's definitely checked these two camps and stole this, uh, and potentially stole this camp, right? Because... Um, if he didn't invade your jungle before, he definitely did now because he knows you're over here. Because he's still on the right side. So he knows you did one, two, three, four. 
And then you couldn't have done Raptors because you have nine and you couldn't have done Krugs or done the full Krugs, right? And you had red, so you had at least five, right? So one, two, three, four, five, and then you picked up four CS from there. How do you get four CS? Well, you could take four small Raptors, you could take the two big Krugs, and then two, you could take this, this, and this. Point being that um, if he assumes you're, if she assumes you're smart, then you probably stole the wolves and you probably got one more, which is probably going to be a scuttle. Um, but you could have also routed some variation of taking the small raptors or taking some part of the Krugs. Uh, knowing this, she knows that there's min value in going back to her wolves, right? So Vi's route, if she was planning on basing anytime soon after, you know, after a couple of these camps or whatnot, she's probably going to clear these camps now because this is going to spawn late and probably going to go back for the Gromp later. Additionally, she could also do some dragon solos. Um, potentially. I think Vi can do some level 4, level 3 trees, uh, cheeses. Especially if the bot lane shoves and then Janna moves first. Although your Galio can move as well and then you can go straight. So it's hard to say if she's capable of that type of a cheese. If you think she is capable of that type of a cheese, then you might want to go to dragon to make sure she's not cheesing. And then you can walk over there with this red, you'll regen enough. Okay, so I'm okay with this rat, right? After the Raptors, uh, I think you have two viable routes, which is going to be um, Krugs into maybe a Gromp invade since you're still shoving in top and you're still shoving in mid. Um, let's look at the structure of the top lane. This is shoving back. So I won't, I wouldn't necessarily go for the Gromp unless you see your Rumble shoving in the top side, right? And then, you know, after you do your Krugs, you might be too low, so you might consider a base over here, or you might consider a base after here, right? If you're going to go to this side, then you know that these camps are probably down. You took this. She probably took this because you you guys traded camps. And then you probably want to go and see that she's not doing Inferno, right? But your bot lane shoving in, your mid lane shoving in. And since this interaction is occurring, that means Galio and you are here, and your bot lane isn't. And that means uh, Vi, Janet, and Cog are here which means that it's a three versus two, which means you don't want to take this bot river fight. So it's really risky for you to run in straight because of collapse potential. You'll be in a three V two, um, which kind of means that you need TP to TP match. Um, now the wave is shoving back. So rumbles TP is going to be universally worse than Singe's TP because uh, Singe should be able to TP first and have wave pressure because his wave is shoving back to you. Um, well, there are micro situations where, like, let's say the wave is shoving back and, you know, it freezes out here, or, like, the, the shove isn't quick enough, Rumble gets back to top after the fight quick enough to freeze that. Uh, you don't know how long the fight is going to take on average, and, uh, the assumption is that the wave is going to crash and that's bad, because you don't want to, you don't want your Rumble to miss that, right? So going into the bottom side is a little bit sketch. Um, you might want to consider waiting for, uh, your bot wave to shove back a little bit, and which they sort of are, right? Um, Cog isn't doing a hard shove. So you might want to like, instead of walking this way, you might want to walk over here because if I's here and Q, here and Q's you and EQ's you, you're probably going to die flash for flash, right? So you probably want to walk over here, you know, maybe like walk this way, you know, let your red region a little bit, let your ball lane shove out a little bit more, let your rumble respond, and then go check if the infernal trees, right? You can still check the infernal trees, but you just don't want to do it from your side of the jungle. It's too risky. So this way is probably a lot better than this way. So let's see how you proceed. Uh, you, you die here sometimes. You die here a high percentage of times by face checking like in this manner and you go flash for flash which is bad. And yep, there's the cheese, good, good. So I like how you scouted the cheese, the potential that Vi could do this and the, the potential that this could occur. But you want to wait a little longer. You want to wait for your bot lane to get the reverse shove. You want to walk with your red as we establish, and you know. But you, you got to the same point in time, and you weren't punished for it. Just EQ her. Let's do it. Burn her flash right now. Wow, she didn't flash it. She got so greedy. I don't understand. So now Galio is coming, right? You have clear advantage. Singed. Looks like he did some type of bases and shoving. TP to TP can match. If Singed base, he's gonna have a buy advantage, but TP is. Like, if both teams TP, if everyone comes, it's a 5v4, right? Your bot lane is shoving and your mid lane is shoving. This is a clear dragon. Drag it out. Take it. Ping on the way. Ping assistance. Assistance, assistance, assistance. 
should have been more aggressive. Look at the status of the lane. This is shoving out, so that means their bottom lane has to catch here or risk losing the CS under turret. Your Galio moved first, right? Based on the stats in the mid lane, your Galio is stronger and moved, and Galio can help you tank. Look at the top lane se setup, uh, TP to TP match. It's a clear 5v4. After you kill the Vi, uh, you can start ping assistance, assistance, assistance. It's a clear smite secure. You could have snowballed this game out of control with this Infernal. And then now you you know that she took your ground, right? You saw her that she had 11 CS, so you know her at was 1, uh, 2, 3, 4 at least, right? And then she picked up 7 CS after that, right? So how does she pick up 7 CS when it's not your wolves? Uh, you know, from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So you know she took this, obviously, but when you walked here, it was gone. So it's pretty obvious what camps of hers are coming up. It's either Gromp or Krugs. And then now you have to think about Krugs, right? Given that you've, you know, misplayed certain situations up till now, now you have to think about Krugs and Gromp. So what are the likely scenarios? You look at where is she going to go and how should I play it, given that I got a kill, right? So when we look at the gold values, you have 1331, right? You know that she's going to have less gold than you because you definitely killed her, right? And both flashers are up. So you have a variety of plays that you can make, primarily of which where you should counter because you have a gold advantage. Now, I talk about you losing to Vi, right? Well, that's only true in the, the neutral sense where both teams aren't like messing up. And when you get a gold advantage, that means you have more effectiveness, right? With, 12, with 1100, you can buy, you know, Tabai, you can buy uh, Tracker's Knife and, you know, Ruby. Uh, you can probably, if you wanted to, you could go for Serrated Dirk or Warhammer. You could, you have a variety of buys that let you overpower Vi based on the amount of gold she has relative to the amount of gold that you have, right? So, you could theoretically go for some counter ganks now, because even though you lose 1v1, uh, you've gotten an edge back on it, right? So it's it's more flippy. It's it's more unclear in how a counter gank goes. So where do you want to counter? Well, you could... You look at the status of top lane, right? And you look top lane and says, well, you know, there, how many casters are there? One, two, uh, three, four, five, six. You know, one is a little low. How many casters do they have? Uh, six, relatively even. How many melees do they have? They have three about to die. Um, how many melees do we have? We have three, and they're full HP. But Rumble's here, so Rumble can shove, right? Uh, which way is the lane towards? Well, the lane is closer towards their side, which means that uh, their minions are going to get here first, so Rumble has the option to freeze or shove, right? So you could potentially say if Rumble shoves, then one of Vi's routes could... Like, if Rumble decides to shove, which... You know, they're, we're not going to discuss the merits of the lane because we're talking about you as the jungler, right? We don't know what Rumble wants to do. But if Rumble does decide to shove, then one of Vi's paths could be to go for the Gromp into this, into the top gank, right? And if Rumble doesn't decide to shove, then the lane is here. So Rumble might go top for an unfreeze, right? Or Vi might not... Or, Vi might go top for an unfreeze or not go top at all, right? Maybe Vi thinks that Singed... Uh, can't unfreeze by himself, right? Let's say that Vi doesn't go. Well, there are a couple of situations, right? Let's say Rumble shoves. Well, if Rumble shoves, then Rumble can't shove that quickly, right? It's going to take a little bit. He he doesn't have an item yet. I'm going to go with he. He doesn't have an item yet. It's going to take a while. Vi can feasibly get here in time to do some type of a play like this and gank top. Let's say Rumble freezes. If Rumble freezes then Vi can come assist, and then you could potentially come and assist, and then freeze the 2v2, right? Because it's sort of a wash who wins this now, and uh, Rumble is the one that's initiating the freeze, So, and Rumble is the poker in this lane. Obviously, Singed is the one that has to tank the damage by running through the minions. So you can fortify Rumble's freeze by assisting, uh, by assisting Rumble from getting a freeze denial from Vi, right? Alternatively, if Vi doesn't go top, then in this freeze, Cinch has to move up or risk losing all the EXP 
and whatnot, and then you can go for some type of a gank, right? So there's a lot of merits to going top. Let's look at the stature of mid lane, right? Well, mid lane, you know that um, it's seeming, seemingly ga uh, seemingly GP based, right? So uh, Galio probably wants to match. Um, Vi is still dead, right? So it's 4 CS to 6 CS. This wave is obviously shoving in. And it's probably going to go something like, this wave is shoving in. Um, Galio's going to try and get all the CS, obviously. Uh, GP's going to TP onto one of them. Galio's going to have to walk away, use their TP, and then come back. And the wave will be frozen here, right? Because, obviously, your team has more CS and it's shoving this way. So, it's reasonable to assume that maybe Vi wants to gank mid, right? After the TP, Vi can gank mid from here, gank mid from here. It's reasonable to, for Vi to go for some type of a mid gank. Although Galio will be high in HP, and one of Galio's potential buys is going to be the Ninja Tabby to double counter the jungle uh, mid AD composition, right? Um, doesn't have that much. Has 800. So Galio could go some type of a Ruby Cloth buy. You know, a variety of armor buys that potentially could occur. A boots cloth buy. Some of these builds are reasonable, right? The real question is, do we think that when Galio TPs back to lane and plays up here, it, uh, he can die to the Vi? Now, let's say we think that he, you know, he'll, he'll be strong, right? G, let's say GP lands an E to do this much, lands a Q and lands an auto and does this much, right? And let's say Vi lands a Q and then a couple of autos and then E, right? Galio probably doesn't die, given that Galio does a, a reasonable build. So insofar as that is true, Galio isn't gank immune, but Galio probably can get out of the situation by taunting the Vi uh, out of her Q, you know, by taunting them so that Galio doesn't maximize damage, by Eing away, by flashing away. Now you might want to protect your Galio's flash, but as a general rule, Vi doesn't want to gank mid unless Vi knows that she can get the mid kill, right? Because then it'll just be like flash trades are bad because they could trade two for one flashes. They could w waste time because they don't know if this flash on Galio will matter in the future. Um, they could potentially set that up, right? They can like try that and then try a refreeze and then do something along those lines. But overall, uh, top seems to be more important than mid because mid is self-defensible. While... Rumble might need assistance in the shove or in the freeze. And then you look at the bottom side riding, right? You look at the bottom side riding and say, oh, well, uh, let's look at the situation. Um, can Vi go bottom? Okay, sure, why not? Uh, what happens in the 3v3? We don't necessarily know. Do we have wards? Yeah, we have wards. So, can Vi get over here? Mm, not really, if... Zai awards this and this in case of Blasting Cone or Q over from Vi. Uh, they have enough wards, right? They have a reasonable amount of wards. Vi can't really come from the lane like this without being uh, detected reasonably. And even if she does Q flash, they can counter flash, so it won't really happen. Um, is our lane aggressing them? Yeah, we got a lot of minions. We have so many more minions than they do. If they try and fight us the minions, we might even be able to 3v2. Additionally, they're chunked, and we're like full. We're effectively full. So the bot gank is very, very low percentage by Vi for a large amount of, like a large variety of reasons. Even if she does get behind, uh, this takes your Zaya missing, your Zaya or Nami missing their flash, flash reaction. This exhaust being low value, this heal being low value. There's so many ways that your bot lane can get away, um, similar to how your Galio can get away. That's really not worth it because. If they do gank these two situations, if I does decide to gank these two situations, and you just base and move on to top side map, you're, she's going to concede another round of camp invades. She's going to concede a dive, potentially, that she can't protect the Sintrum if Rumble decides to shove. Uh, there are potential counter ganks that you can do in this spot. So I think the best move here is to base and go top. Now I know it's four minutes in, five minutes in, and I've gone on for like 49 minutes of this huge replay, but this is like all important stuff. So I don't like doing wolves here. I like base moving top. I see this ping here and I, I thought about you know Vi potentially cheesing the dragon. But this doesn't happen if you calm with your team, right? 
So you come with your team, maybe you type like, hey guys, uh, Vi could be going Krug spot, or like you ping back here, and then you ping Zaya's wards here, and then you ping the ward here, and then maybe you type, oh, Vi can go, Vi can queue over here to gank bottom, or Vi can queue over to do the dragon. Uh, like you can double account, right? Like if you're, if you communicate with your team enough, then you know to tell your bot lane to ward here or ward here. This stops against the dragon play. This protects the bot lane in the plays. Uh, they're pretty gank immune. Your mid lane's pretty gank immune. It also gives your mid lane protection because uh, Viking queue over and then try and do some wrap into the jungle over here to try and gank your mid laner. And in a theoretical world, you shouldn't have to worry about anything on the bot side here. So look at the position that Rumble's putting the wave in. Rumble's putting the wave in at freeze, right? This is a perfectly reasonable way of playing because um, Rumble doesn't know what you're going to do, right? Rumble doesn't know if you're going to assist if he does shove because he doesn't know if he can get the shove finish, and this is one of Vi's viable routes, right? So this is pretty standard play coming out from Rumble. And out of resources, and Galio's going to do that play that we mentioned, which he's probably going to base. Right? And Citra's going to try and shove this, and Rumble's going to try and freeze this. Right? So there's this ward, but you didn't come to your team that Zaya should ward this in case of a cheese and in case of a gank around, right? So, it was interesting. This wave didn't freeze here as expected because Galio got, the, got a shove in, right? So that means these minions are going to clump, these two minions are going to die, this wave is going to shove back, right? So TP for TP. Um, buy for buy. Uh, Galio's a very strong ninja tabby buy potentially. And then the wave is shoving back. So that means your wave can potentially be over here, right? It's a, it's a strong freeze for your Galio. Keep this in mind. This has some implications, right? Now, you typically don't want to freeze coming into the 6 minute and 30 minute mark because that's where you want your mid laner to have the most impact, right? You want to do the 7 minute buff reinvade, the 730 uh, buff and reinvade. But for the foreseeable future, just keep in mind that your Galio has freeze option, right? So I like that you're going to top, but I would have liked it more if uh, you didn't do wolves. Now, did it matter in your buy? No, you just picked up some extra stuff. It doesn't matter too much. And your rumble decides to clear the wave, which I think is uh, questionable. Like, if rumble clears the wave, then the wave is neutral. Then if you go for this gank, then there's not extra minions in the 2v2. So I guess that's a reasonable point. But he could have started shoving at a later point in time. I could be over here, and this is a this is a good move. I would have liked the move a little earlier. No, this is clear. And now you're revealed, right? You're revealed with 18 CS. So they know your route was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, 15. Kill here. 18. All right, this is like the only route you could have taken. Unless you picked up, instead of picking up wolves, you picked up like three of these. So they know that your Gromp is up again. They know that your Raptors are going to come up before your wolves. They should know this. And they obviously know you're here. Vi, being the reasonable person that she is, most likely went here and could be floating around here. Now, we know from Spectator that seemingly she went Krugs. But uh, on average, she's going to be on the top side of the map. And you should tell your bowling toward this. Now you know she's here because of you're paying attention to the map, so you see this uh, scrying function. So now you know she's here. So now you, you know her out was 1, 2, 3. You saw her here. Uh, 4, 5, 11. She was trying to do this at 11. And now she's over here, so she could have ran over here to do this, potentially. So you know that from here, she had 11, right? She could have gone 21 as she does in the spectator. Uh, she could have gone less than 21 by trying to skew the numbers by not finishing the Krugs. Or she could be moving on to the side of the jungle. The fact that she's not in the top side means that uh, your top pressure is strong, right? You know she's here. You know Galio should have... Galio saving TP, but Galio could have TP'd mid, right? Had Galio TP'd mid, this interaction would have occurred. It would have went shove. Rumble has option to shove because you're supporting, right? So Cinch can't actually move up to wave, so it could go shove, shove, and then you could go for jungle reinvade, right? 
because obviously your rumble moves first and Galio moves first. If Galio wants to commit the TP for this type of a macro edge, then you could have denied these two camps as well. Uh, but that might be a higher level play because obviously you guys are opting in a stronger 3v1 with first rotation. So, he's going for a freeze. Nice. Singe didn't flash, and that's Singe's mistake. And go flash, flash. Good. So, it's Singe's mistake for not flashing your EQ. Um, you know, you kind of have a free roll. When Singe is standing over here and you have a free walk into EQ, you might as well EQ to get the flash for free. Um, if he flashes, then you can, you know, you get a free flash, which is fine. It's not unreasonable for you to trade some tempo for a flash um, when it's not risky, right? Like, this is much different from the situation we were talking about initially where you could have gone counter gank. This is uncounter gankable based on this interaction over here. And you could potentially, you know, EQ, flash here, and then maybe get the full combo onto him. Who knows, right? Uh, you probably won't get that kill, but, you know, at least get a flash. So now you're doing this invade, right? This invade is very clear. Rumble's moving. Dragon. And this interaction doesn't actually happen if you tell your bot lane to work here, right? Because let's say worst situation. Remember, your bot lane's a shover, right? That means they rotate first. So your bot lane shoves, your mid lane shoves. They ward this, they ward this. Vi tries to cheese this. Galio moves first. Your bot lane moves first. It's a 3v1 on here. Sure, GP and their bot lane could follow, but it's a bad interaction because now you guys are poking, right? So now Galio's throwing Qs. Now, uh, now Vi is scared to hit the dragon. Uh, you're getting range auto attacks with your bot lane champions. Kog is scared that the wave is going to crash and he's going to lose his CS. Chain is uh, less interactive in terms of tempo compared to Nami. Um, GP isn't that strong right now. Uh, the Galio is strong. You guys have Rumble TP. Uh, Singe can TP down as well. Can turn into a big fiesta where you they do outnumber you, but you do have tempo. Or you do have lane initiative movement. So obviously this jungle invade is fine as we established. You're going in. Cool. Obviously, you know they just took the dragon, so you're going to clear the spot farm. Or top farm. Why do you just... Why don't you EQ? This is good, but you want it a little higher so you can see this interaction as well. Sweet spot is right here. You can see here, here, here. And a little bit of here. And a decent amount of here. Um, so, looks like you're opting out of the Gromp, which is safe, right? If Vi based after Dragon is walking up, he might catch you here and Singe is closer than Rumble is. You would have to you would have to TP onto this ward or your flag, which is okay. Um, and Galio ult versus GP ult, but Galio is the impact player because Galio actually comes. So, it's not unreasonable that you go for the Gromp. I think it's fair that you go for the Gromp because you put down a TP ward for your Rumble and you have a flag to TP to. Additionally, you could also just fight for the blue. Oh, you're just taking this. Cool. Cool. I like this play. I'm a fan of this play. Not a fan of the way you use non-EQs. So, uh, so GP might be moving. Hard to say. Now, what could Vi be doing, right? Well, after Dragon, Vi could be saying, Okay. Well, I could potentially blind invade here, but that's a little risky because they could collapse on me 3v1 because of bot in. Mid, and I don't know if Jarvan's spacing to come down. We don't really know Jarvan's position right now. So invasion is a little bit risky. Vi probably doesn't want to do that. So if Vi got 11 CS and started the dragon again, then Vi could potentially do the Krugs and base. Or Vi could potentially base and come up here, right? But Vi knows that this side of the jungle is really unsafe for her based on the potential interactions of, that just occurred in the top lane. Rumble has stronger stats, stronger CS, a stronger buy. You are stronger than Vi because Vi took time to do dragon. Um, while you took time to, uh, you got the kill, you go, you got an assist, so that means um, one your initial buy is stronger. Although she's she could base come up and buy, so the buys could be equal. But uh, you have the Galio proximity, while she does not have the Galio proximity, and she has to keep in mind that uh, TPs could come into your jungle as a flank. So Vi doesn't really have any strong responses because she's by definition she's conceded these top sides. By definition, she can't go to these. Right, um, and so her her routing is almost effectively this, this coming up, this coming up, or some type of a mid or bot play. Right now, can she go for 
Um, she could go for bot camps. We don't know if her bot camps are up, right? We don't know if her Krugs are up and her Raptors are respawning soon. In the meantime, can she go for mid plays? Well, an ult does... Uh, we reevaluate again, right? We reevaluate the amount of damage mid can do. And with this particular buy and catalyst, you know, ult probably does this much. Um, and then maybe a barrel, and then maybe a Q, maybe an auto. This gets over here. And then Vi Qs, it's going to... Do this much damage, and maybe his kills, right? This is under the assumption that Galio doesn't flash away. If Galio flashes it, then there's no way, like, mid play is good. That being said, she can just go into mid to go for the mid play, right? But she doesn't know if you're here to counter. He doesn't know your position. Uh, he just knows that you gank top, but he doesn't know if you're here to counter gank mid. All he knows for sure is that you're in the top side. So if Vi does go for this mid play, it's high variance. Because she doesn't know if you counter, she doesn't know if you hit six off this. Because yeah, she hasn't been farming. She's got the dragon. You have more XP than her for sure, right? Um, you might be six if she's countering CS properly. If I click on you, I think you're close to six. Uh, yeah, relatively close, maybe one or two camps. And so she might just opt for the bottom side play, right? Her plays are probably going to go something like this, where she knows that you're over here. Can you get bottom quick enough? Well, if you just did this and then you walk over here and then you do a base and then you walk straight bot with Mobies, with Moby boots, then maybe you can go down. But she probably, you know, the rate at which she could do dragon and then gank bottom is way faster than the way that you could gank top, base, and then get down, right? So she could gank bottom. Her, her plays are this coming up, this that maybe she didn't do yet, um, or bot ganks. Because by the time she goes for your blue, uh, you're probably going to be there in time if you had based here. And then you don't even need to be there for your Galio and your Balling to collapse, right? If you're calming properly. So I think her plays are 1, 2, 3. And of the three plays, I think that ganking bottom is fair because you're going to get CS and they don't necessarily turn because of the CS numbers. And they, you know, the enemy bot lane could definitely win a fight or at least force some summoner spells, which is perfectly reasonable. And then she can probably retract her camps after that. So I would say that that's her most likely play, which makes, yeah, you know, which doesn't really change your play unless you wanted to go bottom right away. But as we said, you probably couldn't get there quick enough. So we're going for the steal, and I would go for the Gromp as well, right? If you can go for these two, you can go for the Gromp. Rumble can still TP. Rumble can move up first, even though this lane is shoving back. Rumble is the initiative player. Rumble can ult and have more impact in the situation. Um, and Rumble is stronger. It doesn't take that long for Rumble to jump back. Rumble can even ult to get to the situation faster, and Galio gets here first. So go for the Gromp. Here's Vi. Vi has 29 CS. How does Vi have 29 CS? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 11, 21, 22 with Dragon. 28, 29 with second scuttle. So you probably know that she did like scuttle drag or drag scuttle and then cycle these two camps before or after. That's all you know. Now you, you obviously know where she is. You know she has flash. You know she's level 5. You know she's going to hit 6 uh, later than you are. You are 6. And you know she could go for this grump. Who knows? Like she's being really dumb. This is really dumb. Here you go, Punisher. Flash, flash, flash! Flash! Flash, and if she queues away, oh, what the fuck? You got the flash, but why didn't you just kill her? Like, alright, worst case scenario, you flash over. You kill her. You don't take any church shots because you kill her outside because you ult, and if she queues, then you can cancel it with your ult. Or you can lock her. Cinch comes down, but Galio gets there first. Like, there's no bad scenarios here. And you still get the grump. Right. Really clear. And you steal the grump, right? So again, what is Vi's route? She's probably... She has to concede her top side. She has to go back to her bot side. Red is probably the only play. If you wanted to be really aggressive... You could run straight to her red. Hmm, you have a variety of plays from this point. So, 
One, I would say that your top can shove, your mid can shove, and your bot can shove, right? You have overtaken the status of the game because you have flash, she doesn't, and you have six, well, she doesn't. You have tempo all over the map. So you could go for this top kill. But you can also choke. Because you've, you can, you've taken everything on the top side. You know these are the camps coming up. And you know the red, her red is coming up, right? Because you just took the blue. You know red is coming up. And you can run cross map. You know, maybe do some janky here. So, something janky here. And you can invade and you can deny everything here. Assuming your bot lane still has a decent shove. And even if you don't, you can walk down here. And then just like gank bottom. Right? You can gank bottom 3v2. If Vi runs straight bot to counter gank. She's level 5. You're level 6. You're going to win the 3v3. Plus you have Galio. Plus you have two TPs. Um, where your top lane is stronger and your mid lane is stronger. Like, it, it should be GG from this point on. 100%. So what happens when you gank here? Well, uh, I mean, you don't get the EQ off, right? At best, you... Like, if you EQ on top of Singe, Singe is going to flash. Then your ult is going to do this much. Maybe. Then the rumble ult is going to do a little bit more. And then rumble can flash. Maybe get a couple of E's, maybe a couple of Q's. Probably won't get the kill. Because Singe is going to flash here, and Rumble can only flash up to here. Maybe if Rumble gets over here, maybe, but it's low percentage, right? You don't even need to impact this lane. You have no incentive to impact this lane. Because one, you can't get the kill. Because you know Singe has flash. Two, uh, the wave is, can be put in a freeze. And the wave can also be put in a shove by Rumble themselves. The only reason you should be staying around here is if you think Vi is crazy enough to say, nope, these camps aren't mine, but I'm going to go top and do a lane gank and do this. But that is so much commitment because Vi from here, she definitely based based on her HP value. It would take roughly 30 seconds for her to do here. And then look at the status of the lane, right? The status of the lane is that it's probably going to be over here based on this freeze that Rumble's initiating. So even if you, you uh, Vi's here, Rumble's safely under tower and has flash, there's low percentage death. She can't hit 6 because of the EXP disparity. No, None of these camps are up here. She might be able to tax EXP for 6, but that's very suboptimal, hurting the Singe more than you're helping the Singe, probably. And you don't even necessitate that kill. Even if you do ult under tower and Singe flashes, then Rumble might be able to outplay 2v1 under the turret if they do go for some type of a dive. It's just not that strong of a play for Vi to run up here. You're probably best leaving your Rumble to self-freeze. And Rumble can probably drop a word here to do uh, scouting against Vi that wants to do some type of lane gank. The strongest play, in my opinion, is to go into the bottom side jungle. Right? Maybe after you, you did this interaction, you base, you run over here, maybe you buy... Offensive items, defensive items, Tabby, I, I would buy defensive at this point. The only way you lose this game is if you get picked, so Tabby versus these two and this guy. Or, I don't know. I feel like Mercs is a bad buy here. You could finish Warrior, whatever, buy uh, Hunters and uh, Tracker's Knife. And then just move over here. Galio moves first, take over these camps. They can't do anything about it. This is like sub off That is not you being good. You have to recognize that this is not because you are good, but this is because Singed is bad. Right? There was no Rumble lay down. Rumble didn't flash. You didn't flash. This is just Rumble being bad rather than you being good. This play doesn't actually exist in a perfect world. If you're going to play to your opponents making mistakes, that bad, right? I'm not talking about a pick. I'm not talking about you set up Baron Vision and you get like a really strong pick because of the way you set up in a macro sense. I'm saying this guy just doesn't have the reaction time to press this or he doesn't understand that he needs to. That's all. So at this point, if I was, if I did that play, she would be picking up the CS now. Um, so she's not top. You know she's bottom side. You know her bottom red is respawning and then some variation of Raptor Scuttle, Krugs is going to respawn. You know you have first move initiative. And your bot lane is low on mana. So you might need to impact bottom lane. But you used your ult and now Vi has her ult, right? So ganking bottom is now dangerous. Why? Because it looks like our team is low on mana. 
you don't have an ult while she probably has an ult from picking this up. And you could have completely denied this by just moving across the map and not impacting top because you didn't need to impact top because it was winning already. So I like the choice to not go bottom. It's good. Um, I like the choice to not go mid because she has ult and you don't, so you can lose 2v2's mid. Plus you haven't bought yet, and you probably have an absurd amount of gold. Yep. Probably want to pass this over to your mid laner in a high percentage of situations. So instead of this interaction, you probably want to realize that giving it to your mid is better. You probably want to do Gromp into this with like some ward defense against Vi invading you here. But Vi invade probably doesn't work out since Galio moves first and your bot lane could move first, but you probably... Now you don't necessarily win the 2v2, right? It's just that Galio gets here way faster than GP gets here, right? Galio gets here in one a couple seconds while Galio has the TP for 6 seconds and is the ult. I don't know, Vi invading here is not that good unless their bot lane comes as well. Which, you know, is dangerous, which means that you probably want to ward this for their bot lane to come. Probably want to give this over to your mid laner in a high percentage of situations. Yeah, and this is why you do Grump. That's really bad. I mean, your ult is back up here, so it's fine, right? You're still pushing in mid. You're presumably pushing in bot. You presumably have a stronger 1v1 since you have two buffs. Uh, they have red, but they don't have blue, so you have a blue on them. You have some TP edges. You have Galio. This invade seems fine to me. Now, this invade is more for information because you know that this side of the jungle should be clear based on, you know, everything. You know they're mid as, uh This gank is a little risky. Because 2v2 under turret probably favors them because of tower. So you really don't want to go for this on average. And what do we think Vi's doing, right? So we know Vi took red and some variation of raptors or whatnot. She had 29 CS when she was here, right? So we have to keep that in mind when we see her. We know that uh, these should be respawning. There's better positions for this. Here to see the raptors. Here to see more here. Uh, I like this position to see the raptors, right? So if the raptors don't respawn, we know that it's the third set of raptors that are coming up instead of the second, which means that from 29 CS, you probably went to 35. Um, well, from 29, she probably went 30 and then 36. Uh, otherwise, you know, and if she took red and raptors, she should be at 30, then 40. So we, we know this coming in. But if she's in this area... And she could gank bottom, right? And the bottom 3v3 is good for you. It's strong. It's decent. You have ult. You have uh, probably level. Uh, you don't have Vi, but Vi's are relatively strong and you want to defend them. Um, what you really have to do in this situation... I like this invade movement, but I would prefer it come from this side. Because... Your mid isn't really susceptible, as we talked about, based on health, but your bot is susceptible. At this point, obviously she's not going to ult the Zaya with the ultimate, but she could ult the Nami, could chase down. So let's say let's say Vi somehow gets over here, um, because you didn't tell your bot lane to ward and they didn't ward. Then what happens to the Nami, right? Well, what happens to the Nami is the, the Vi ult goes on Nami. Uh, Nami flashes over here. Um, she exhausts... So she flashes, and then she probably exhausts the Vi to take less damage, so she probably takes this much damage. Uh, she Vi probably waits out the duration of the exhaust, because she's not an idiot. Probably gets a E, you know, a couple autos, a Q, another E. That's a lot of damage, right? Cog, being in this position, if she's over here, Cog can flash over here. And the Cog flash, W, maybe she gets one or two autos. Um, with Janna damage, it's over here. And... With the uh, possibility that, you know, she gets a kill is high because Vi can still flash after to get consecutive autos. So, obviously, the way you gank the Zaya is much different. Um, Q flash will not work on a Zaya with enough reaction time and R-ing. It's just going to be bad. It's just going to be a waste. So, uh, Zaya will probably flash over here. Um, exhaust will come down. Nami is obviously not going to die. Maybe she'll take this much damage initially. Uh, 
with auto E, and then if she's smart, she'll ult the R or ult the Q, and it's really hard for her to die. So Zaya's almost never going to die. But you know that Nami can die sometimes. So the move I would have liked from you is to have gone Vision, but gone Vision more defensively on the bomb side, right? Maybe some ward like this. If this ward sees protects your mid laner and also sees by going over the dragon wall to interact with your bot lane. It also puts you in proximity for the bot lane 3v3. You might want to ping your Zaya ward and then ping on the way here to say, listen, I'm going to help you guys ward here. I'm going to protect you guys. Or you might want to, you know, do something fancier, right? You might want to hide in this brush and then go for the hard counter. Who knows, right? But you put your bot lane in a very difficult situation here, and I, I do not like this. And so Raptors comes up. You see this with your ward, but it could be a little better. So you know that the camps that uh, Vi probably did after Dragon is going to be Red and Krugs, which probably puts her at 40. And so you can take it from there. She might reestablish on the top side based on Singe's proxy, right? Now that Singe proxies, uh, well, the lanes are actually like this. She can potentially 1v1 you, and uh, Galio still pushes in mid. But that means that Singed moves down and Galio moves down. So it's a 2v2. It's sort of flippy. It's sort of a wash. Galio gets there first with ultimate. But, um, you know, Vibe might be a little bit stronger than you. Uh, because um, she has E if she's on equal level and she has gotten some farm. So we don't know. But obviously, with item spike, they're pretty strong. I really recommend Tracker's Knife. And as such, you kind of expect her to appear here. So you kind of expect her to appear here and gank the Nami, appear here at Raptors, or go onto the left side, which she thinks is okay now, right? Um, your bot lane can still shove, your Galio can still shove, so these invades are very risky because she doesn't know if you're here and she'll get collapsed upon by Galio. So here's Vi. And she does this for a variety of reasons, right? She thinks that she can win the top lane scrap based on Singe movement and being able to 1v1 you, which is uh, possible, right? But you, she doesn't know that you bought yet, right? She could predict that maybe you bought and you probably have Warrior, which means that she's probably losing that interaction. You're probably 7 and she's probably 6. So I would say that she's making a flip play, so we don't actually know what the end result of this is. This is a very clear move. Rumble should move. Go, 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 go! Doesn't matter if GP's missing. Take take the 2v1. Take the flip. Nice. And then there's more. Go support your rumble. Okay. Two for one. Good. Two for one is good. Two for one is fine. It could have been cleaner, but two for one is fine. Right? Press tab. Realize that she has 46 CS, yes, and she took one big Krug, right? So what does that mean? So after this, she had 40, and then she picked up one here, so that's 41, and then she picked up 5 CS. Where could she have picked up 5 CS from? Um, you know, it could have been... Uh, we know that, while it's easy to say that, oh, it could be three here, one here, and one here, and then invade, she would have been level seven. We know that for sure based on um, based on just standard EXP calculation, right? We also know that uh, the five that she could have gone uh, can't be from the lanes. So, actually, did she kill this entire thing? I didn't see, I didn't pay attention. No. Right? Do, do, do. Well, when we look at this, we can say that uh, she's at full HP with red, right? And we know it's not her raptors. It could be her... Uh, we take a standard timer, right? Because we stole this gromp, we know what time this gromp comes up and we know what time these wolves come up. So it can't feasibly be any of these two camps. 
So the fact that she has 45 CS here is uh, really strange. Did she steal like some of your small raptors? I actually want to see. I don't know. We'll, we'll get around to seeing it. Like, she might have done scuttle and done this, but her direction it looks like she took a bunch of small raptors. Because we know that these camps couldn't have spawned. She could have done like scuttle, a couple of these. You know, taken the five small ones, left the big one. Who knows, right? Or or left one small, right? She could have taken the big one, four, and then left the small one. That's probably the, the most logical conclusion. Because we know these don't spawn and this plus four doesn't make too much sense. So, uh... I don't know. This isn't an interaction I come up with because... It's really, um... It's because I'm not a fan of leaving one there, but I think the more I play the game, the more I am a fan of leaving one, uh, you know, one small raptor or Krugs up or whatever, right? Because um, it just messes with the CS numbers a little bit, and it hurts their respawn time, so I'm going to incorporate that into my own gameplay as well. So you do this interaction. You know she picks up one and five. Do this interaction, which is fine. And now you have a choice, right? You know Galio can base TP mid to get pressure again, right? Um, you know that both ballings haven't based yet. But you know you have at least a 15 second window sin before Cinch TPs and then Rumble can TP after that, right? So you have some really strong plays here. You can go for invades, right? Because if Galio base TPs, Galio gets the shove. Cinch will get the first shove, but you can get these camps before Vi gets here. Um, so even if Singe collapses, then uh, Rumble can TP to your location. So it's all it's like a 2v2 when GP moves and Vi can't get here yet. So you can take all these camps. Or you can go for the Herald. Both are fine. Both are reasonable. Um, which one do I lean on, right? I lean on camp steals in general because um, while Herald has initiative, uh, you can get Herald at different points in the game, right? You don't have to get Herald now. It's not like... It's going anywhere for nine minutes. Um, you could go Herald into... Like, what are the implications of getting Herald? You get the 100 gold, you get a little bit of EXP, and then you go for, like, some big push, right? Can you go for some big push? Sure, your bot lane can shove once, you know... It's close if your bot lane can shove. Your mid definitely shoves and your top definitely shoves. You're definitely stronger at this point in the game. Probably once you base and base on items. So you could go for some Siege. Um, do you have a strong Siege? No, you might have more of a dive with Jarvan, Galio, Rumble... Uh, what towers are low? Like, you can't get immediate value from it. None of them are at half HP, so you can't get immediate value from Herald. I just like double camp steal a little more. Hmm. I don't like retracting into your own jungle. I like double camp steal. So, um... Singe is back on the map first. He's got TP, so this is going to shove. GP is shoving, so going for these two camp steals is going to be bad because uh, you don't want your laners to concede the CS, right? And the 1v1 is acceptable, but they move first, so you're not invading topside here. Um, what is what is your routing now? So uh, your top laner is strong, so Rumble's going to try and freeze the situation. Your, your Galio is TPing probably, so he's going to try and freeze the situation. Or shove, right? They can opt into shove or freeze. They can opt into shove or freeze. You, you can probably do some invades, but you don't want to invade here based on if they freeze. And then you can uh, move for bot lane strength as well. Dragon is coming up in two minutes, and it is Earth, right? I'm not one that actually values Earth too highly, but it's a reasonable dragon. Um, I'll take Herald over Earth any day, right? Because Earth only matters if you can hit objectives and if you can do it. And even at that, it's only marginally faster. You probably save like something like five seconds or three seconds. So it's it's really small, unless you're sieging to get multiple autos. Um, that being said, you do want these scuttles, right? Scuttles are important. Uh, scuttles last a minute and 20 seconds. So uh, this is 150. So you probably want to get the scuttle sometime less than a minute and 20 seconds, which probably means that you could have gone for this scuttle, right? Instead of clearing this ward, you could have like done this, done this, and then gone this to protect the Herald based and then come down and then gotten this you know or you could have done some other plays with protecting uh wow it makes a tp sound you could have done some plays by protecting this freezer protecting this freezer there's so many things you could have done so i think camp camp scuttle uh look for potential gank 
look for potential gank is good because you win 2v2 mid and 2v2 top in this freeze position. Um, you kind of force Vi to pick, right? Like, like let's say, let's say you did this, 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 and now you have option to move here or move here, right? Um, you think Janna could roam, but you saw Janna here like a while ago. So let's say you don't go mid, right? In case Janna roams here, you don't want to take a 3v2 in case Vi is coming straight up lane, right? But you for sure could move for a top side, right? If Vi comes over here, one, they're opting into losing 2v2, and two, you help support this freeze, right? What can Singe do? Singe can't move up to unfreeze. Singe needs, Vi help. Singe needs Vi's help to unfreeze. Can Singe get Vi's help to unfreeze? No, because if Vi comes up, then you 2v2 them, so she can't unfreeze. So how can Singe unfreeze this? Um, and I say it's an unfreeze because their siege minion is less HP than, or higher HP than your siege minion, right? So how can there be an unfreeze? Well, I guess they have to send GP ult or they have to swap. That's all, all they can do. So I like this, this, this into top gank threat. And Singe is shoving, so... This is a pretty clear move into top side. Like, even if you didn't do camp steal and scuttle, this is a pretty clear top move. And yeah, she did do that thing. 46. Pretty clear-cut top move. Now, see, you could have been here so much earlier if you had just done this, this, this. You can force a flash if you want. Ults. Oh! Oh, 2v2. Take it. Take the 2v2. Take it. Oh my god, dear god. Okay. Is this bugged? You have ult, right? I'm gonna assume you have ult since the game says you have ult. Okay, why would you EQ here? Just open with ult. Singe can't move anywhere. Auto, auto, auto. If he flashes out, EQ to where he flashes. And then you 2v1 him before Vi gets here. 100%. That's how you play it. You win the 2v2. 100%. Maybe Rumble doesn't have ult. Or... Maybe this is bug for him. Maybe you guys don't have ult. If you guys don't have ult, then I don't know. Or if you guys don't have ult, then it's a different story, right? Then maybe she has ult. Maybe you don't have ult. Okay, so what do you do from here? You... Get the scuttle, as we talked about. You got the scuttle, so just go for the scuttle now. Rumble's doing a shove, but it's a little risky. Since Chiefy's missing. missing. But she has some protection. She has this, this. And Vi could be here, but it's unlikely. She showed up with 49 CS, so you think she took Wolves, which is reasonable. And Vi's top. So Vi's doing a concede. So when Vi shows top here, um, to neutralize this wave, one, she hurts Singed. Two, uh, Galio here is here first. Um, your bot lane's basing to answer the item disadvantage. But uh, the wave is still shoving in a little bit, even if it's just over here. So you can get the scuttle for sure. There's no contest on the scuttle. And scuttle is important because it gives you dragon movement priority. Galio's got shoved mid. Top tops are going to reestablish. Oh. You can't fight. You can't assist. All you can do is hold it. Hmm. Okay. So you need to ping your Galio for assistance now. Ping assistance for Galio because what happens if um, Vi ran straight bottom? Right? Vi's here. Or Vi was here, so Vi bases, right? So Vi bases here. Singe reestablishes. Both TP's down. But if you try and defend this turret, you're going to lose the 2v1, right? So you need Galio to defend you if GP is moving. So you need ping assistance on your Galio in case you need to 3v2 under the turret. Perfectly fine to take a 3v2 under the turret because the turret sort of counts as a person. I like that you're getting the scuttle. But I like turret defense a little better. Because it also gives you... Actually, it, it's close, right? This gives you golden EXP. But this gives you the scuttle control. 
Although I do think the scuttle is still yours. It's close. I'm not upset about this play from you. It's reasonable. Galio's basing. No, 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 no. No invade. Galio's made his intention clear that he's basing. Your bot lane isn't here. They can rotate first. Uh, you might lose one of you onto Vi based on matchup. Uh, this is bad, right? Do not do an invade. Oh. What? Stop queuing first. So Galio's staying, but it's bad, right? If they rotate first, then they can 3v2 you. It's bad. Don't do this. Because we don't know where Vi is, right? Vi was here. But Vi could have wrapped around. Vi could be Solon Herald. Vi could... Like, if you're assuming Vi Solon Herald, then this is fine. But you can't just assume that, right? Like, she could be invading here. Has top lane turned? Not really. Rumble still shoves top. You still shove. Galio still shoves. So top side is still yours. And bottom side is not yours right now, but it's probably going to become yours, although it's hard to say based on cocking that kill. I don't know. This is just a super risky invade. Don't do this invade. Nope. Yeah. Just don't do this invade. You don't know where Vi is. You don't know if Vi is watching you. You don't know what's going on. So she had 58 CS. She had 49 here. 50. Um... And then she picked up eight, so maybe one. Maybe she did this, and then six. Actually, I should go back a second. So she probably did 49, 50, 51. She has blue for 52, and then she probably did the steal for 58. And you don't really... Why are you going damage? This is just unnecessary. If you had bought Ninja Tabby's first buy, if you had uh, bought Cinder first buy, it's super hard game to lose. If you had gotten Trackers, you could have Learn so much more about Vi. So now Vi is tempo, right? Uh, Vi can't do the drag here because the bot lane is moving up, and even if GP moves up, it's a 2v2. So their Vi isn't going to opt into that. But Vi can probably do this, do this. And then reestablish on the map. Uh, so your move is, you don't know if your bot lane wins. In fact, you can even assume that your bot lane loses. Why? You're dead right now. They have Rage Blade. They have one completed item. You guys don't have a completed item yet. Uh, you got Your team died in a kill. Uh, it's hard to say who wins bottom, but you probably lose bottom because Cog outranges and gets for us, gets first auto on Zaya. Even though Zaya shoves better, um, Cog can sort of zone out. So the lane dynamic has changed now, right? This is still true. This is still true. But now this. Um, Vi is still stronger than you. So let's say there's a bot lane interaction. That means they move two. You move one. They move another one. And they have three people and you have two people. So bot side is no longer your side. Let's say top side. You move one. Uh, they move one. Or you move one, you move two. You, you move three, obviously, yourself, and then Vi moves one. So now you've lost bots, you've lost bot side tempo. So you really want to be playing on the top side now. And this sort of plays into my idea that uh, Earth is less valuable than Herald. So what you really should be doing is you should be moving towards the top side of the map and saying, okay, well, Vi had 58 CS here. Um, Vi could probably get 59, you know, over here. Um... And you lose this, right? You lose your side of the jungle. This is not yours anymore, really. Unless Zaya somehow miraculously outplays, outplays the Kogma. So you're really going to go for uh, vertical jungling. You're going to go for trade, right? You're going to go for this side of the map, and they're going to go for this side of the map. You're going to concede your blue and your camps and take their stuff, right? So they had 58 CS before. So you know that it was... Um, 
they picked up this and they probably picked up scuttle and they probably picked up your own raptors um and they probably picked up grump so these are going to respawn later so you can because it went 40 then it went 46 then she showed up here at 49 50 so these were down and she showed up at 48 which probably means she did like she did this 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 into moving over here which means that these camps are spawning soon within the next minute and you know that just from uh, camp timer. And so, what you're gonna do is here. What you're gonna do here is you're probably gonna go get your red. And then you're probably gonna try and invade the side of the jungle, play to your strong side. She's probably gonna play to her strong side. You're gonna get Harold and trade for Earth. Okay. The Bowling's gonna lose as expected. Galio goes there. Now Now this is not your strong side, right? Ooh, this is uh This is a dicey situation. Hold on one second. Okay. So your mid laner went bottom, right? You don't have mid lane tempo anymore. How many players do they have? They have Singed, GP, and potentially Vi on the top side of the map. Top side of the map is no longer yours. On the bottom side of the map, on the bottom side of the map, Zai is dead. How many champions do they have? They have potentially one, two, three, right? So they have three here, plus two potential TPs, so they can have five here, right? So bottom side of the map is no longer yours because your guy's dead, you're not on the bottom side. So you have no side of the map right now. So you're going to play as safe as possible. And going for this play is reasonable. It's not bad. Sure. I'm okay with this. Vi's over here. Vi is 62 CS. So uh, 58, 59, 60, 61. And then 62 being the word, uh, being your Gromp or being a ward. Maybe she picked up one CS somewhere that I didn't see. Point being, this is down, this is down, this is down. Um, you can still go for topside invade, right? And here's why you can still. Just let the CS die to the turret. Why don't you get the CS? Okay, topside invade. They show their bot lane bot. Their Singe is dead. Their Vi is bottom. Your Galio is reestablishing mid before GP does. Can Galio die? Well, Vi is over here, and GP isn't reestablished mid yet. She, he has a defensive ward on Vi's side. This shove is going to be pretty free. Invade. Take these two camps that you know are coming back up. 100%. Those camps are yours. Rumble, TP, Singe, TP, match. You win that situation. Yeah, go. Get them. But you could have done it so much earlier. You could have responded 10 seconds earlier, right? Why do you reveal your position? Why would you take the scrying to reveal your position? Please, EQ. Please. Although there might be a reason to not E here because you might need Rumble to TP. So, I can get behind that. You want to back out here because you're scared of Janna rooms. I don't like this one. I like taking one camp. And I'll even acknowledge the fact that Singe could be here and Rumble couldn't. So, I like, if Singe is running here, then he's here before Rumble. And Janna can roam because you haven't seen her bot and the lane was reset. So, I would just go for the one camp. And I'd be saving the E for the TP, but Singe shows up. And Janna could still be missing, so you could still be 2v1. And this is bad. You kind of deserve this for being greedy. And now, now Vi knows what camps are up, All right? Singe can proxy. Um, Vi can solo this. Galio can move, but GP can probably also move since the wave is neutral right now. You guys probably lose Herald, and or you lose your side of the jungle. Your bot lane died, so you're going to lose the bot turret no matter what you do. 
So this is no longer yours. This is no longer yours. Uh, this is no longer yours. This is no longer yours. You you fucked yourself this game. In build, in movement, in tempo, in decision making. And, yeah. So this is shoving. So we have his neutral shoving. Galley is basing. Like you can ping this, but this isn't yours. None of this is yours right now. Okay, so you know she took Harold, right? That means she probably took Harold instead of stealing your camps. Now, can you still go for these camps? Well, Vi ulted and you didn't, so I guess maybe you could win that. Mm. Yeah, I mean, your lanes are getting shoved in now, right? Like, your Rumble still might be able to shove top, but your Galley is getting shoved in now. Additionally, there's a clear shove in because Cog and Janna can come from... Like, Cog and Janna can clear your bot side jungle, come here, tempo out your mid lane, and now your mid lane shoved in, and now your top lane is shoving out, but it doesn't matter because their support can come, and then you lose all top side control. So, at this point in the game, you've probably lost the game. But yeah, like, the game was yours. The game was yours to throw. So, why is top? Okay. Great. Vi made a mistake, right? Vi didn't contest your side of the jungle. Now, if I were Vi, I would consider doing this instead of Herald, because there's still time on Herald. I would go for the Red Steel into the Raptor Steel, and then probably leave the Krugs because of time. Or, or maybe even contest you on the Krugs when you walk over here, if you do walk over here. Because walking to the bot side is shitty as well, since their bot lane just took it over. But uh, she just let you have this, so just take it. Like, she's letting you have all this, just take it. What are you walking into? What if Vi's here, Q's you, you don't have flash yet. Singe runs at you. What if Singe is right here, flash flings you? What the fuck are you doing? The mid lane died. That's probably your fault. You're good. Alright. So they get a trade. That's an interesting interaction. So now, dead, 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 dead. GP is probably going to base on this HP. So it's actually top jungle versus top jungle Nami on the map right now. Well, Nami can't invade on her own. So, um... Next dragon is Cloud. Herald is down. And so the next clear objective is going to be the dragon, right? You have some plays such as taking this red, going mid... Um, asking Nami for assistance here, shoving one mid wave, and then moving with Nami here to secure vision here. Um, because GP's base, these two are dead. Uh, Singe can come, but can be matched by Rumble TP. And Vi can be there, but you outnumber them with Nami in a 3v2. So you can establish vision and get the scuttle before a dragon. So I like that as a macro play. a dragon time. Alright. So, the choice you made means that um, the map neutralized, right? Rumble's back top, Singe's back top, TP's, TP's. Um, they want to be top because they want to be across the dragon. I think the overall macro has been fair. You typically want Galio mid. Um, like, I'm talking about lane assignments, right? I'm talking about like swaps and things like that. It's been relatively fair. Um, remember at the start of the game we said that your team probably gets outscaled and Lazaya gets into melee. So you still have decent win conditions. It's fine. But tops are establishing, mids are establishing, AD carry. They pro they're probably going to send their AD carry mid because their bot wave is shoving to put tempo and your lane is matching. So this is fine. And you put yourself in a situation where... Like, is GP stronger than Galia right now? Probably. Is Cox stronger than Zaya right now? Probably. Or is Vi stronger than you right now? Probably. So 4v4 mid probably isn't going to go that well. Rumble still probably tempos out top, but you're going to be playing from a defensive position. You can go for some type of engage if it's really good. 
If you just randomly 4v4 here as a flip, I think that's a bad idea, sort of like some of the other things you've done. So Galio, um, Kago's bottom. And I think that's a mis I think that's a macro mistake. Because he he's not using 6th man. So Baron in 150, which I knew when the dragon was. I don't think you can take the scuttle. The scuttle isn't yours. Mid is even. Top is pushing in, which means Sinch has first TP. Your bottom lane's over here. This scuttle isn't really yours. And if it, if you are gonna take it like this, take it over here. Don't force it this way. It's so bad. Jump shows. This scuttle is not yours. This jungle is not yours. And this jungle is probably not yours because of their bot lane. Just farm your own jungle. That's the best you can do at this point in time. Just go to. <sighs> Don't move over here. Don't you fucking dare. Don't engage. Don't. Where's their cog and Janna? Well, their Janna's here. Where's their cog? Well, he was bottom and he started rotating up now. Where's their Vi? Well, Vi probably reasonably figures out that we should be around Baron and Dragon at this time. This is just dumb. Like, can you not press tab and see the missing champions and try and predict where they are? Just a little bit. Just, just a little bit. Like, is it plausible that they could have been there? The play should have been, like, it's going to be way too long before, even if you guys try and defend, right? Rumble might be able to ult this, but there's still a Herald. Um, and there's the consecutive wave coming in. So if the consecutive wave is coming out from base right now, uh, it's going to get here very late. Which means that Rumble could go over here and ult this. Which means that, like, Zaya and Nami can't actually do anything here, so Zaya and Nami should have probably went for the bottom turret. That's a mistake by them. Mm. I mean, Rumble's not here yet, so. Rumble probably has to ult this wave. Rumble loses Flash. You guys are gonna lose this turret. What Rumble needed to do was, Rumble needed to, um, n first start's dead, right? Rumble needed to realize if I don't do something here, we're going to lose the NM. That's what Rumble needed to realize. So Rumble needed to TP to this turret while they were on this turret, ult this turret to save two turrets and inhib and concede one turret, right? So if Rumble concedes one turret to save two and inhib, that's a lot better than the, the play otherwise. Plus he's still probably gonna lose this. But you realize this is your fault, right? I mean, like, blame is irrelevant, but how you can get better is more important. And now I would say that Vi definitely kills you. Although not necessarily. So Rumble and Jarvan, Rumble and you are probably okay. But your carries are behind, which is bad, because you need Zai to be stronger than Cog, so you're not going to fight for now. I mean, you could fight for now, but it's going to be a really hard fight to win based on these guys. You probably need to do a really good job picking, but you can probably take some variance of a fight. Um, GP shoving bot. And you've lost your top turret. See, Rumble doesn't want to over because we don't know where Vi is. It's quite aggressive. How you go, yeah. It's bad. You have to play defensive. And now you for sure concede something. If Cinch base TPs here, so Rumble has to shove this wave, right? Once Rumble shoves this wave, the wave is going to neutralize here, pushing towards them because your minions are going to clump. This is going to shove into you no matter what. And uh, Zaya obviously isn't accounting for. Like. What should have happened is Zaya Nami should have went mid, Galio should have went bot with the TP, and then Rumble should have stayed where he was over here because of uh, status of the map. So once you show Zaya here, Singe can TP here, and you can just they can just outnumber one, two, th and TP three, four, five versus one, two, three. If Nami's coming this way, so they have a clean Baron. They have an extremely, extremely clean Baron. 
Now the fact that GP is staying here is irrelevant because GP should be TPing over here. And once you show Nami there, the only thing you can do is have Rumble and Jarvan here. And then uh, the best thing for you guys is to go for some type of steal. So you should be looking for some type of steal, but Kaga is going over here because they're bad. right? They could have taken Baron, but they're not. Here you get the free dragon. You have to win from some type of hyper engage. Because the Jarvan and the Rumble are the only lanes slightly even or marginally ahead. And you have to be able to kill their carries, uh, which is the uh, burden on you based on how the game is played out. Because Saya could be ahead, but isn't. So you're going to have to burst one of these guys. Otherwise, you're going to play defensively. You know the interaction, right? You know that Vi-Q cancels your EQ. Learn that interaction. Plus, even if you do go in on this, they have first rotation. Your team is under turret. Your Galio is sort of in base dealing with it and can ult. It's okay, but their bot lane moves first. It's just a lack of macro awareness. And, like, I'm not going to go over, like, everything you can do. I've given you, like, so much information you can improve on. I'm not... Like, you might ask, how do I improve macro awareness? Well, learn these concepts. Learn these concepts and practice them. Look at the map, press tab, use F keys. Understand what your champion can do. Understand what their champion can do. Understand how lanes operate. You guys lost Baron, and when you lose Baron, Singe is just gonna beat on Rumble regardless. So, uh, Rumble actually has to concede in case they're over here because you have no vision here. Nami hasn't come to establish vision. You don't have a. Uh, Tracker's Knife to establish defensive vision here, so your Rumble's probably going to die here a decent amount of the time. Yes, come defend your Rumble, that's okay. But remember, defending your Rumble doesn't actually matter because your Zyra's on the bottom side map, so your Rumble has to run away. Like, this is like basic, right? You know your Rumble's going to die, you can ping away. Okay, maybe you can get the Jarvan. Or maybe you can get the, uh... oh, it is bugged on your ult, whatever. You're going to be outnumbered. It's going to be 5v4. If you can TP back in, this is their inhib. Concede it. Clear concede. Don't fight when they have Baron and you're outnumbered. Clear concede. What are you doing? Clear concede. Outnumbered. Outstatted. And I assume you forfeit here or die here. So that's it. This is my... Um, this was my first attempt at this type of a long replay analysis. It's been roughly two hours. I hope I went into, like I went into solid details of what could have been done and all of this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys for watching. Memes.